If you've been wondering about what the heck sister locks are and where they came from, then you clicked on the right video. In 1993, Dr. Joanne Cornwell trademarked the Sister Locks hairstyle. The style would go on to spread like wildfire throughout the United States and the world. The company motto is Sister Locks is not about a hairstyle, it's about a lifestyle. So is Sister Locks like a private club causing more divide in the black community? Or has its impact spread more positivity than negativity? Also, did Dr. Cornwell actually invent this hairstyle? or did it already exist? There's a lot to unpack here in a short amount of time, so let's get into it, shall we? Dr. Joanne Cornwell is an associate professor of African studies in French at San Diego State University. From a young age, she loved to style her natural hair. In her college years, she was perming, hot combing, and styling her classmates' hair. In her adult years, she started formulating the sister locks technique, experimenting with her own hair. After trademarking Sister Locks, Dr. Cornwell toured nationally, appearing on TV, radio, and essentially sharing this hairstyle with America. Today, Sister Locks, the company, continues to promote and teach its natural hair management system. And they teach this to anyone who wants to learn it. I also want to note that Joanne Cornwell has two sisters, Celeste and Carol. Both sisters also work within the Sister Locks company, and Carol was in the original Sister Locks commercial, and she was also the first person that Joanne Cornwell installed Sister Locks on besides herself, of course. Now that you know a bit about the founder and its origin, let's break down the business model. The Sister Locks company consists of three divisions, training, products and accessories, hair services. It has grown to become a huge network. The company offers training for people to become Sister Locks consultants. Before becoming a consultant and you're in training, you're called a Sister Locks trainee. The format for training is 16 hours online, three hours Zoom, and 16 hours in an in-person class. In-person classes are hosted in various cities across the US. Once you complete all the training, you will go on to get the certificate, similar to the structure of getting a cosmetology license, but obviously with way less hours to complete. In order to apply for the certification, you have to submit documents showing your work on actual people on three clients. It is not a requirement to get certified, but if a trainee doesn't certify within two years, they will become inactive and will no longer be listed on the online training registry. Keep in mind, certification evaluations can take anywhere from two to six months to become approved or denied. The company also offers add-on training like the ambassador certification, the refresher class, and the retightening class where you can learn how to retie your own locks. There's also the R certification class which allows sister locks consultants to teach the retightening class, available online only. Lastly, there's the certification bootcamp. Now, are you curious about pricing for all of these certifications and classes? Because I know I am. Let's get into the pricing. The training program or Sister Locks course, whatever you want to call it, ranges from $1,495 to $1,695. The certification costs $175. There is a $50 late filing fee if you file past the two year limit by no more than six months. If you're considered inactive, you have to pay the $50 fee as well as the $200 refresher fee. The brand ambassador certification is $575. The refresher class starts at $150 and the retightening class is $250 for in-person, but it's more for online, $325. The R certification is $400 and the certification bootcamp is $150. Keep in mind, I'm getting all this information from the website, so if anything is inaccurate, I'm just repeating what the website said. Let's move on to the next division, which is products and accessories. There are four different types of shampoos available on the website. There are a few hair mists, a moisture treatment, something called a reconstructor, and a few other things. There are also pens with the logo on it, water bottles, license plate frames, etc. The packaging on all of these products are really unappealing to me. There are a couple of books for sale and get this, CDs. Yes, you heard that right. CDs are available for sale on the site. And we're gonna talk more about the site a bit later. The last division is the hair service division. So the website has a list of consultants with their phone numbers and emails right there on the website. Some consultants have other certifications and that's noted next to their name. There's also a list of trainees on the site, then another list of approved trainees, which means they have submitted documentation of their work. 
Apart from that, that's the only resource that is provided on the website. I'm not sure how up to date these phone numbers and emails are, but apparently that's the job of the consultants to keep it up to date. Okay, let's talk about the website real quick. Y'all, it's outdated. And I mean dinosaur outdated. Let's just be real. And my question is why? Why hasn't this thing been updated? This is a business, right? Thousands and thousands of women across the world are interested in not just getting Sister Lux, but learning about what it actually is. And also becoming consultants and possibly starting their own business. And this resource is what they have to refer to. I find it weird. Now, granted, we have tons of other resources on Instagram, YouTube, and even TikTok. But like I said, this is the Sister Lux website. This is what started it all. The least they can do is update it. Oh, also Sister Lux has an Instagram page and a YouTube channel, but the thumbnails are not eye-catching on the YouTube channel. And I think the video quality of that channel definitely needs to be upgraded. Same goes for the Instagram page. It's not engaging content. I think that they should really be putting more effort into social media because people will always have questions about sister locks or how to become a consultant. This might be a long shot, but is the reason that the website is not updated that the company doesn't have to be held accountable? There's no designated way to complain and warn others about other scammers or consultants and trainees with poor work ethic. There is no review system or rating section for consultants and trainees, which I think should definitely be implemented. Or are the people who are in charge of the website simply very old fashioned and from an entirely different generation? Because the website is definitely giving boomer energy. Let's go on a small tangent, shall we? So during my research for this video, I saw some people talk about how this hairstyle already existed in Africa, specifically, I saw some people mentioning the Hamar tribe. So the Hamar people live in southwestern Ethiopia and they have a very distinct look. Their hair is a deep, vibrant red and styled into small locks. Does this tribe use the interlocking method? The answer is no. I'll insert a clip of what the process looks like. So the tribe uses a mixture of butter and okra clay and the hair is rolled into small locks using a method very similar to palm rolling. But let's talk about the Maasai warrior's hairstyle. I'll insert a video of how the men of the Maasai style their hair into very small locks or twists. Sometimes they even add wool to extend the hairstyle to fall in their lower back. A tool is actually used for this process. Check out this video. And let's not forget that Dr. Cornwell is a professor of African studies. So of course she has studied and read about various tribes within Africa and certainly must have come across how they styled their hair. The men of the Maasai tribe's hair looks very similar to Sister Locks. Now the method is not the exact same, but I can definitely see some inspiration for Sister Locks within their styling technique. Again, this is just an observation. I'm sure you will let me know your thoughts below, but you see the similarities, right? Another tribe with a hairstyle similar to the Maasai are the Samburu. They are a nomadic tribe living in Northern Kenya, and they share a lot of similarities with the Maasai tribe. So if you're interested, go ahead and do a quick Google search on them. In terms of the style originating in Africa, I think it was definitely influenced by tribes in certain countries, in certain parts of Africa. Dr. Cornwell herself says that she was inspired by the locks that she saw on other women that you know, she came across in her daily life within America. I don't know if this is true, but I found myself on page five and six and seven of forums from 2005 to 2010. And some people were saying that Dr. Cornwell actually spent time in Africa. I'm not sure which part of Africa. Can anyone in the comments below fact check that for me? After watching a couple of interviews, I learned that she wanted to create something similar to the small traditional locks that she saw around her, but she wanted to create something even smaller, something that wouldn't easily unravel, something that closely resembled loose natural hair and something that was as versatile as loose hair. The promo video for Sister Locks, which is available to view on YouTube, basically shows women that you can do everything and anything that you do on your loose natural hair, straight hair, permed hair with Sister Locks. That was the initial approach of the Sister Locks 
brand. And that's where sister locks is different from other types of locks. For example, with traditional locks. I think most people get traditional locks to just embrace their natural selves, not because it resembles loose natural hair. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let's talk about the court case. Not the court case that's posted on the website. I'm talking about the other one. So in the early 2000s, it might have been 2005, I believe it was between 2005 and 2008. Cornwell took Deborah Belton to court. Belton is the owner of the company called Nappy Locks, which is now called nappyandhappy.com. After doing some digging, I found out that Belton was sued for trademark slash copyright infringement. Supposedly, Belton started the Sister Lux training program prior to starting her business. I'm not sure if she ever completed the program or if she just started it. All I know is that she signed a registration form, which allegedly said nothing about maintaining secrecy of the sister locks technique. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. The founder of Nappy Locks at the time sold a course and or a book of some sort showing people how to interlock locks of all sizes. The book is actually still available on her site and it's sold in a kit with other products. It's not sold separately. Nappy and Happy also still sells lock tools and hair care products. So she was sued for trademark infringement, but she won the court case because it was proven that the interlocking method itself could not actually be patented or copyrighted. It was difficult to find a lot of information about this case and a few website links that were available while all of this was happening are now deleted. Okay, now let's move on to the tools used by Sister Lock consultants and trainees. Sister Lock's consultants and trainees use two tools, the hook tool and the clip tool. The hook tool being the most popular of the two. In fact, I haven't seen anyone use a clip tool in any of the videos that I saw on YouTube. These tools are not sold to the public. Only consultants and trainees can purchase them. Although if you've taken the retightening class, you'll be gifted the clip tool, which like I said, is the least popular of the two. They do keep it very hush hush. Of course, other companies have made replicas of the Sister Lux hook tool. And apart from the Sister Lux tools, there are a ton of other lock tools that work perfectly well available on sites like Nappy Lock or Nappy and Happy and on Amazon. Have you ever wondered why there aren't any tutorials online about how to retie your locks with the Sister Locks tool? When people go through training, they have to sign documents which prevent them from sharing tutorials online. Now, there are videos of people with Sister Locks retightening their hair, but they're not using the Sister Locks tool. If the Sister Locks tool is being used in the video, the video is still up because it is not presented as a tutorial. What I mean by that is, the person isn't explaining step-by-step step what they're doing in detail. And you won't find that with Sister Lux installs either. I'll try to remember to link some videos below. And I'll also link below some sites I used while researching this video. So after watching a video of a Sister Lux consultant talking about Sister Lux, I learned a few things. Supposedly there are three different sister lock sizes used during installation, large, medium, and small, which means that after the consultant meets with a prospective client, they will analyze the hair and decide on which sizes work best for the hair based on the density. Your hair density is not the same throughout your entire head. So with sister locks, the lock parting sizes will also change depending on the density in that specific area. Did you know that trainees get a size card with three different size squares to represent the width that each part should be? I also learned that there are four different locking patterns. Basically, there are four different types of rotations. I was surprised to hear this. I mean, everyone knows about the two, three, and the four point rotation. That's only three rotations. What could the fourth one be? Maybe an inversion of one of the other rotations? A reverse of one of the other rotations? Could it be a five point or a six point? It seems kind of excessive, right? In all the videos I watched, the Sister Locks consultants or the person with Sister Locks doing their own hair was using the four point rotation. This four point rotation is universally known and commonly used, whether you have Sister Locks, traditional locks or micro locks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm referring to the rotation that enters at four different points, 12, three, six, nine, to complete a full rotation. In terms of the grid, which Sister Locks has claimed for themselves, parting 
is parting. Our people all over the continent of Africa have been parting their hair for centuries, which is why we do it as well. Now, is the sister lux grid formulated in a particular way? Sure, but anyone can do it. That's just my opinion. And also, anyone cannot do it. Having the perfect grid, I think, is very overhyped. Whatever you want to do with your hair, especially if it's embracing your natural hair, then do it. But don't get obsessed with the grid. If your hair doesn't stay in a perfect grid throughout the duration of your lock journey, it's not the end of the world. I've heard some horror stories about Sister Lock's Facebook groups and how toxic they are. I think that that's where a lot of false information about Sister Lock count started. There was a point in time where people said that you have to have over 400 Sister Locks to actually have Sister Locks, but that's not true. Sister Locks is not just about the lock count. It's about the grid, the lock sizes, and the tool used. So what lock count range is considered Sister Locks? This is directly from a consultant who was doing a video that I discovered on YouTube. Apparently in the book, the range for sister locks is between 200 and 600 locks. And to me, that range makes a lot more sense because everyone's hair is different. You have a bigger head, you have a smaller head, you have higher density, you have lower density, you have thicker strands, you have finer strands, you have this texture, you have that texture. So it doesn't make sense for a lock count to be so Hi. Not everyone's hair is going to allow for 400 locks. And it wouldn't make sense for everything to depend on a lock count because according to sister locks, there's so much more that goes into it, specifically how the grid is formulated. To me, that's what appears to be the most important. Okay, so I also checked out the Better Business Bureau and there are a bunch of unresolved complaints on there. People expressed their dissatisfaction with their lock installation, saying that it was messy with uneven parts or that they were having difficulty contacting someone within the Sister Locks company to speak to about an issue with shipping, payment, or general complaints. The Sister Locks world is kind of shrouded in mystery, which I'm sure is part of the business plan. Cornwall created sort of a private club. If you pay up, you're in. Now, I don't want this video to come across as only bashing the Sister Locks company because Sister Locks contributed to black women finding a way to love their natural hair, and I will always support that. Let's segue into the court case between Cornwell and the California Board of Barbering and Cosmetology. In 1997, Sister Locks and the ANHNA filed a lawsuit against the California Board of Barbering and Cosmetology, charging that California law was unconstitutional because it did not conform to the 14th Amendment equal protection qualifications. Cornwell and ANHNA charged that there was no rational relationship between existing California legislation and the actual practice of natural hair care. The required 1600 hours of cosmetology training typically includes no training whatsoever in natural hair care. On August 18th, 1999, a California federal district court judge ruled in favor of Dr. Cornwell's position, which represents the position of literally thousands of natural hair practitioners throughout the state. This precedent-setting case has not only made life easier for many, it has also protected the integrity of the cultural practice of African hair braiding from inappropriate tampering by an insensitive government bureaucracy. And that's a quote from the Sister Lux website. So this is a great achievement. Of course, without this change, the company wouldn't survive because how would consultants and training aides be able to operate businesses if they didn't have a cosmetology license? And who would invest all this money into becoming a consultant when they would also have to get the cosmetology license? This wasn't the only state that was being challenged at the time. It was happening in a bunch of other states as well. The Institute of Justice, or the IJ, was founded in 1991 and is a non-profit public interest law firm. Their mission, is to end widespread abuses of government power and secure the constitutional rights that allow all Americans to pursue their dreams. This was the law firm that worked with Cornwell, and this is a law firm that continues to work with individuals to fight for their rights. 
there are still a bunch of states that require a cosmetology license to open a hair braiding salon. In total, 33 out of 50 states don't require braiders to get extra licensing, and that's a couple of steps in the right direction. Let's go back to the cosmetology license for a second. The information that is taught in cosmetology school is catered towards non-black, non-melanated people with non-textured hair. On May 16th, 1982, the Attorney General issued an opinion that the practice of African hair braiding falls within the definition of cosmetology and requires a cosmetology license. Can you imagine? That's crazy to me. How does hair braiding on its own fall under cosmetology, and if it does, then why isn't hair braiding taught in cosmetology school? Make it make sense. So I personally give my props to Dr. Cornwell and all the other individuals who fought for and are fighting for the rights of Black people within America. Because the system was not created with us in mind. It was not created for us to win, that's just a fact. Yet we still fight and we still win. I also commend all of the Black locticians, consultants, trainees, and hairstylists who are running their businesses like well-oiled machines. Shout out to all the Black hair business owners who care about their clients and treat them with dignity and respect. It's easy to take the shortcut and cut corners Corners when running a business. It takes much more effort and willpower to run a respectable operation. Let me pose this question to you. If Sister Locks hadn't been trademarked at the time that it was, would someone else have trademarked it? Would it have grown to the level that it's at now? Who knows, right? But we can all agree that everyone in the lock community and majority of people researching locks know what sister locks are, and that says something. Now, even though Cornwall paved this new avenue for businesses, for black people, specifically black women in the hair industry, does that mean that the sister locks brand is without blemish? Of course not. I've just exposed the blemishes in this video. There is a certain level of accountability that should be taken, but is that going to happen? I seriously doubt it. There are going to be shady consultants, shady trainees, lack of customer service and professionalism within the business. Do I think the owner should refresh the brand? Hire a black designer to fix up the website? Hire a black digital marketer? Do I think they should hire a black graphic designer to revamp the logo and packaging on the products? Or even to hire a black chemist to upgrade the products themselves? Absolutely. Now, I also acknowledge that this brand is already established. It's so established that we don't even think of it as a company. I mean, the company is older than me. But does that mean that it doesn't need to improve? Of course not. Here's what I want to tell you. Always do your own research. Form your own opinions. When it comes to our natural hair, just because someone is a consultant or her skin tone looks just like yours, doesn't mean that they have the best intentions towards you or your hair. I personally haven't encountered any negative experiences with loctician, consultants, simply because my mom installed my locks and I maintained them myself. It would take a lot to trust someone to be in my hair. And at the end of the day, I'd rather do it myself. But being on social media, I've received a few anecdotes from people telling me about negative experiences they've had with locticians and sister lock consultants and trainees. And I've also seen this firsthand. I'm going to tell you a secret. You don't need to go to a sister lock consultant or trainee to get a beautiful lock install. There are so many talented people who install gorgeous sets of micro locks, and I've also seen a lot of gorgeous DIY micro locks. But if you want sister locks and the specific grid of sister locks, the entire sister locks experience, then go for it. There are also lots of very talented sister locks consultants and trainees to choose from. And to be honest, nowadays the price difference between sister locks and micro locks installs is decreasing because lately microlocks have become very popular and trendy. There was a time when everyone complained about sister locks being very expensive and it's true. They still are expensive depending on the state that you're in and also who you're going to and their level of experience. But nowadays, locticians who install microlocks are charging a lot as well because the demand is there. Here's the thing. I love to see all the many talented black women starting people's lock journeys, whether it's traditional locks, microlocks, or sister locks. But what we don't often see are all of the horror stories. So please share the good and the bad down below. This is a safe space. It's so important to be informed. As black people, yes, we are supposed to uplift each other, but not every black person deserves to be uplifted. 
simply because they're melanated. I don't agree with the idea that because we are black, we shouldn't have a certain expectation for black business owners. Here's the thing, we should be protecting each other too and supporting people who genuinely do a great job. What do you think of a hairstyle being trademarked and created to be used for business and profit purposes? Do you think Cornwell was actually the first person to come up with interlocking? Or do you think she was just the first person to trademark the hairstyle? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, bye.